I think favourite memories for me from uh, 2012, I mean obviously me and Justin doing the Corvette ZR1 from Munich down to Maranello, that was a great drive, a lot of fun, and Justin's a good guy to travel with. I think from a technical point of view, I thought the best driver's car week this year was absolutely outstanding. Um, in fact, we nearly came number one in the top 100 channels we've used that week. Over 9 million people watched the Motor 10 channel that week. So for me personally, that was a huge highlight because it was such a team effort, a lot of people involved to put that on, and uh, it turned out really well. You know, the very first one that we shot, I think, was probably the best. And the first one that we shot was actually the second one that aired, which was the, the so-called Alaska trip, which turned into the which we didn't want Grand to air Canyon because we, we didn't want anyone to see us fail immediately. Right, <laughs> yeah. That's actually what happened, a little behind the scenes action there for you, is that we shot that story, we were gonna drive the Ranchero to Alaska and we didn't make it and we ended up going to the Grand Canyon and we were just tearing our hair out going, we're, we're utter failures, we can't air this first. And so we did the other episode, driving the Pontiac from El Paso home and aired that one first. Subsequently, we've realized that we just fail on every episode, so it really doesn't matter. <laughs> you guys are entertained anyway. So my favorite memory, I mean, there's a lot, because we did a lot of things this year. One was off camera, and that was when we were doing the epic drive through Scotland with the Bentleys, and we're driving the cars back and forth around Loch Ness. It's beautiful. So I said, you know, I should just go down there and look at Loch Ness, take five minutes, long day of shooting, and uh, it's great. But I noticed there's a big flat rock about two feet offshore, this big. I go, you know what, I'm gonna jump on this rock, I'm gonna stand on it, and I'll be the king of the lake, or I don't know what I was thinking. But anyways, I jump on the rock, and it turns out it's covered in slime. And as soon as my feet hit, I go flying, and I wind up more than waist deep in frigid 33 degree water. So I feel like an idiot, and I'm freezing, and I walk back up, and, and I notice that my wedding ring has, well, it's no longer on my finger, because my hand shrank, when I hit the water, it popped off and all I can think of is my wife killing me. So I run down and I'm, I'm freaking out. I'm everywhere, I'm looking, where's the ring, where's the ring? Graham calmly walks down, very Scottish. Notices a glinty uh, gold object about five feet out in the crystal clear water, crystal clear 33 degree water, and uh, there's your ring. So I have to go back into Loch Ness to retrieve the ring. And as I'm walking back up the hill, I step in a pile of vomit. All right, my favorite moments from this year. In the Lamborghini Aventador with Scott Mortara at the world's greatest drag race. We're just testing out the Lambo, and we had the car lined up on a paint line, which as we all know, really compromises your traction. It was really slippery. And as we went to burn out and do a, a drag race test, our wheels spun and we began fishtailing and it was just this awesome moment of absolute lack of control where you're at the mercy of this incredible machine and you remember just how small and fragile you are. Some of my favorite moments from season one, definitely the MB5 escapades. That was just loads of fun and a proper adventure and I got to exercise my mechanical skills and uh, get out of the office for a long time and that was, that was a ton of fun. Let's see, my favorite uh, memory from season one was going over to Germany and shooting a video of the Conti jump. Not only because we were going to Germany and shooting the video from a castle, but also because uh, Ari, myself, and Sean all got to go and all got to do the video together. So it was a, a really good experience and uh, it was a lot of fun to do that with those guys. Uh, hitting that crazy steep uh, banking of the oval on a ZX6R top gear was completely mind-blowing and an experience I'm not going to forget. Favorite memory? Uh, probably bringing together the BMW S1000RR and the Ducati 1199 Panigale because uh, it was a clash of uh, technologies that's uh, really coming into the sport bike world now. There are far too many. There's the Morgan three-wheeler, which was positively the most unique motoring experience I've had. Uh, going to Fiorano, driving the most powerful production Ferrari ever around the test track, that was incredible. And then driving also the RX-7, uh, which was a car I've always dreamed over when I was a kid. The most interesting unlimited video we shot this year for me was probably the boat drag video. Because uh, although the trophy truck was awesome, you know, big horsepower, jumping, that sort of thing, I don't race them, I don't drive them, so I'm not quite as passionate as I am about the boat thing. Um, but it was also challenging because we were trying to go racing and compete but you've got cameras everywhere and they're stuck to the boat screwing up the driver and they're in my ear and you got guys talking to me and uh, so that makes racing competitively 
extra hard. What would I do differently? Not a lot. I think, you know, for a launch for a first time, I think we did a pretty okay job. We made some mistakes, but you know, I always believe that the person who's never made a mistake has never made anything, number one, and that you should learn from your mistakes and try and make it better next time around. So we're continually trying to improve, and I think that's a good, good way to approach this, and I'm looking forward to you know, taking that ethos further into 2013. What would I do differently? Um, I'm not sure what I would do differently, but I do know that I would do it all again. You know what I would change for sure? It is the Lamborghini episode. Not that I would take back anything that I said, but that show was scrambled so quickly. I mean, we shot that show literally in 12 hours total. And it, there's just more that we could have done, I think. It's the, it's the one video we've got that's got almost 18 million views now. And it's got the controversy, but it could have been sharper. Yeah, that's probably my least favorite episode, only because we were saddled with a car, we really didn't get to drive much, you know? Like we had the car, but we had to bring the tires back in the same shape they left. We couldn't leave the state. Couldn't uh, eat we it. couldn't go on a racetrack. We track. couldn't go on a racetrack, yeah. You know, so it was like, you've got this car, and short of me hauling ass on the freeway and nearly getting pulled over for it, that was all the fun I had in it, you know? Yeah. So that kind of sucked. What would you do differently? More drifting. <laughs> what would I do differently? Um, I don't know, I guess focus more on uh, not necessarily outright comparisons, but more like lifestyle fun stuff that has to do with motorcycling. I found that we certainly enjoyed that more and it seemed like the viewers really responded to that better than the, the straightforward um, bike comparisons. Actually I would do probably less in front of the camera commentary and more of the onboard commentary. I think that was definitely a step in the right direction. And my hope is that since this track is almost all corners, just one corner after another, is that I'll just be able to carry more corner speed. And we didn't learn that until later in the season, but um, I think more of that definitely would have been good. It's the Pontiac trip uh, where we flew to El Paso after throwing a dart and then bought that Pontiac and tried to drive it home for 1500 bucks total. Yeah, that one, I had the flu the entire time we filmed. Broken tooth. And I had a broken front tooth, and that tooth was broken from another road trip when I had my head laying on the floor of a car and you smacked the floor with a hammer, <laughs> and my head bounced off the floor. Was that the Buick? Yeah, that was the Buick trip. <laughs> That's why I forgot about that. I think the biggest challenge was getting all the back-end infrastructure in place to make the Motor Trend channel a reality. I mean, we had lots of experience with video, you know, creating product, but never on this scale. And it required a big investment, not just in uh, equipment, but people. And then here in uh, the office, we didn't really have anywhere to put them. So for most of the year, the video team's been down in a couple of dingy offices down in the back of the shop here. Um, that was a bit difficult. Fortunately for 2013, we've moved into a brand new facility and uh, that's going to be a lot easier. We can be a lot more creative and get a lot more done. The most challenging part of this whole On Two Wheels gig has been becoming comfortable in front of the camera because as relaxed a person as you might be, as soon as they turn that camera in your face, you just turn into like a robot. So getting comfortable and relaxed and letting the personalities come through um, in front of the camera and trying to convey who we actually are has been the biggest challenge. The most challenging head-to-head -head episode we did was uh, the uh, three-car one. It was, it was the Cadillac ATS, the BMW 335i, and the Mercedes C350 Sport. Because for the first time, instead of having 12 minutes to talk about two cars, I had 12 minutes to talk about three cars. And a lot got cut out, and uh, a lot got left out, and I uh, just hadn't done it before on video, so it was difficult. And then there was also the little matter of a forest fire, and we had to move locations uh, midway through the day, which kind of screwed everything up, but so that was pretty challenging. The most challenging thing is for sure the time out of the office by a long shot. We take, I would say, between filming, working on cars, and reshooting, it's six days gone every month. Yeah, the interesting thing is, is when we first started talking about doing this, we were like, 
this is the greatest job ever. Because yeah. as soon as the camera's off, we walk away from it and we're done. Wrong. And it's completely opposite <laughs> of that. Because look where we're sitting right now. Yep. Instead of, uh, you know, typing. Shipping a magazine to the yeah. press, exactly. So, yeah, the time thing is a killer because you're constantly apologizing to your wife and family about why you're not home again. But inside, yeah. you're going, yeah, driving a Lamborghini, you know? So. Well, that's the most challenging thing and the most rewarding thing about it, really, is that we're out doing the stuff that we wish we could do, but if we were actually working like we're supposed to be working on the magazine, we could never do it. But since it's our job to do this, we just find a way. Yeah. I think one of the most rewarding things has been seeing how everyone on the team has developed. And it's not just the guys behind the cameras or in the edit booths, but also the people who appear on camera. You know, the YouTube world can be pretty tough. There's some people that uh, make some nasty comments from time to time. What do I think about the comments and feedback I've received this year? They've been far too concerned with hand movements, foot placement, and beards. All right, um, what do I think of the comments? Well, you guys had a lot to say about my hair, and frankly, I don't give a shit. Yeah, there was that one comment in the, in the episode where we went ziplining where some guy's like, I wish when Aerie fell down, his dreads had fallen off. And I was just like, that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Honestly. Comments and feedback on, on YouTube videos. I mean, there was a wonderful article that sort of described YouTube comments as the uh, uh, toxic atomic waste of the internet. And uh, sometimes I agree with that because there's, you know, a lot of horrible things are said. But at the same time, some people make really great points and give really nice compliments. And, you know, whenever I read like, hey, great video, thanks for doing that, it does make me feel good. Never shaving the goatee, thanks to the comments on the internet. <laughs> never. YouTube is a crazy social media. I've never, I thought forums were bad with people going at each other's throats, but it's amazing on YouTube how no matter what the episode is about, it turns into America versus Europe. Have you noticed that? Yeah. How is that? I don't know, people need something to fight over. I'm blown away with how positive it is. I can't believe how no matter what video Motor Trend posts, Within the first 10 comments is somebody going, where's Roadkill? More Roadkill. Let's do Roadkill. Who's the guy with the R-O-A-D-K-I-L-L? -L? I just assumed that was you, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> nope, not me. Uh, and I know it's not our wives. I think we've seen, though, a lot of positive uh, and encouraging comments. It's really great when we hit one out of the park and people respond. You know, it makes us feel good. When we stuff up and do something wrong or it doesn't work, we take note, you know, constructive criticism is always good. We're not precious. We want to know what you want to see and what uh, really interests you. A lot is happening in season two. Wide Open Throttle is going to return to its original news roots and we're going to have round tables with journalists like Angus McKenzie and Johnny Lieberman discussing what's going on in the auto industry. Then my show is going to turn into the J-Turn and it's going to carry on this bucket list style theme where I'm going to be heading out and doing some of the coolest, most interesting things in the automotive industry. It's going to be amazing! So what I'm actually looking forward to is new places I get to go. Uh, you know, last year I got to go to Russia, got to go to Scotland, uh, you know, just specifically for video. And uh, so this year I know I'm going to Sweden and you'll find out why and uh, maybe somewhere in the Southern Hemisphere, which is going to be pretty cool. What's going to be the best part about season two? We're drifting. We'll be able to drift whatever new 911 variant comes out. We'll be able to drift the new Corvette. We'll be able to drift all manner of cars. What else is there? There's going to be a lot of cars that need to be drifted in the second year, and I will take on that task, and I will drift them for your entertainment. Mostly my entertainment, but your entertainment too. Well, I'm looking forward to just more adventure, more fun stuff on motorcycles. I mean, we're kind of just coming up with crazier ideas, going further, doing stuff that's more outlandish, um, you know, just having fun with it, basically. That's, that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to... Uh, we don't know what we're going to do. A budget that's measured in thousands instead of hundreds for next season so that we can leave California, go other places, much further away, much cooler. But yeah. do those work? Should we just go to the throwing the dart every single time and just driving some clapped out junk from there to home? We're actually so bad at throwing the dart, we don't need the blindfold. <laughs> we <laughs> can true. just aim and not get there. Do it over our back. Yeah. Or have 10 beers. That'll do it. What I'm really looking forward to in season two is being able to bring more programming. We're really going to ramp it up in 2013. Can't say too much yet, but what I can tell you is we're hoping to almost double the number of hours of original content we're going to be putting on the channel in 2013. 
it's going to be a big, big task, but I think the team here is up for it. We're going to give it our best shot and hopefully you'll come along for the ride. Happy holidays, everybody, and as always, thank you for watching. We'll see you next year. So from all of us at Roadkill, thanks very much for watching season one, and we hope you'll stick around for season two. Happy New Year's.